Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. I'm Ian McNay and today our guest is Steve Ford. Hi Steve. Hi. And it's interesting how we find our guests. Um, we do very much respond to ideas from people that watch Conscious TV and finding Steve wasn't initially easily it wasn't initially easy. We basically heard about him from different sources and we were told there's this guy Steve and he lives in Slough. He just talks on Friday night sometimes somewhere in Slough. So I put into Google Steve Slough non-duality and nothing came up. But after a time I tracked him down and Renata and I went to a talk in Slough. And it was a very interesting evening and we've invited Steve along today to talk about himself and also what his experience of reality is. So Steve let's start by you gave me some notes beforehand and one thing that interested me was that you did have some experiences when you were quite young in your childhood. I just wondered if you can describe those experiences a bit. Yeah, there, there were um, childhood experiences of, of uh, I, I would call it childhood contemplation, where uh, as a child my identity wasn't uh, as formed as maybe a, as... Uh, strong maybe but, and there were times as a child maybe it's because I was quite artistic or, or maybe because I, I, I would um, what's the word I would uh, imagine or, or you know play with imagination and, and I remember one day just just contemplating on existence contemplating on on the fact of, of what, if, what if the world had never come that's a very deep. It was. I was. I was really. Child. I was such a deep kid. You know. Yeah, <laughs> was, yeah, you must have been. Yeah. You know. And there, there was this. You know, uh, playing around with my imagination. I mean, I did a lot of drawing at school and stuff like that, and and and, and what have you. And and there was just this 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 idea of, of what would life be would have been like if 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 it had not come into being. If something hadn't have happened, and and then there wasn't the world, and 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 what would it be like? And I was just thinking on this, and suddenly. Um, it, it was kind of like a koan, you know, like a Japanese koan where, where you go beyond mind. Suddenly there was um, just a profound silence. There was the, I, I, I kind of went into a space where, into a space of existence. There just was existence. No people, no world. There was nothing, just existence. And I remember uh, the, the sense of um, enormity. There, there's a real sense of, of vastness within that. And suddenly, boom! I, I came back into <laughs> came back into the world. So there, there was that um, experience. And it's funny because at the time I didn't think, you know, that that was amazing or, or, or anything like that. It was only years later when I came into being, when there was the rediscovery of who I really was, you know, in regards, you know, rediscovering my memory, rediscovering what I'd done in all my life. But as, as consciousness, when I began to relate from consciousness, I, I could look back and I thought, yes, there it was, it was there. You know, that, that time when I was contemplating on existence, it was there, there was being, you know, and it was, you know, there was that touch of being. And did you try and talk to your parents or other kids about it? No, 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 it was normal, you know. Um, <laughs> I just, you thought other kids experienced the same thing, basically. Yeah, I, I just I, it was just something that I imagined. I imagined lots of things as a child. I mean, I, I, I would just go uh, on, on journeys, you know, fantastic journeys, uh, thinking about things. Yeah. You know, um, and then and there was another incident when I was about twenty, coming back from Paris um, on a train, and I remember uh, being on. I think it was a two-hour train journey from from Paris to wherever I can't remember now but um, I remember just looking up in the, in the sky and, 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 and then contemplating on, on, on the infinite space you know the world going on and on and on forever and suddenly the mind just disappeared and there was a again that, that touch of hmm. being that touch of uh, sense of just vastness you know and then it went but again I, I didn't ask anyone <laughs> I didn't put it across to anyone it was just 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 an experience really and then you found you found out when you were about 18 year, years old that your father wasn't your real father and that triggered something in you didn't it yes 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 it did because what a shock for you oh uh, it, it was a shock yeah it was sudden um and the way it happened you know it was it was it was it kind of come about uh when i wasn't expecting expecting it and i don't, I don't think anyone's expecting 
that kind of that's, news that's to find out. That's a huge thing to find out. Yeah. Well, it is. It is huge. And it was huge for me. And there's, there's reasons why that, that was huge for me. I mean, looking back, I can see now that what had happened was um, uh, at the age of 18, I, I, I was told, you know, uh, you, you, you do know about your father. And, I was, and he said, well, look, you know, your father's not your real father. And it, it was just a real blow. It was a shock. Because, um, and the reason that be, being that is, is, is because all my life, I kind of, I'd always looked up to my father. And there was, there was a lot of identification stuff going on. I, I would look at my father and, and kind of, as a role model, I would identify myself on him. So as, a, uh, you know, as, as, the, as the man he was, I kind of looked up to him. And, and, uh, and often, you know, as, as a child growing up, I, I would say things to mum, you know, you know I don't, I, I'm like my father, I'm like dad or... or and I would kind of seek that kind of affirmation, but it never came. <laughs> so when I found out that my father wasn't my real father, it kind of, oh, right, that's why <laughs> I was never compared to him. You know, and, and uh, yet my other brother was, who was his, his legitimate child. So oh, there was this real sense of, um, you know, a real sense of, in, in a way, a sense of loss, quickly. There was a sense of... Um, it's all been a lie. My life up until then had been a lie because there'd been a lot invested in, in trying to be like my father. So then there was that real sense of, OK, my whole life has been a lie. And there was a sense of feeling foolish as well because in my family, which is quite a big family, everyone knew except me. So there was that real sense of foolishness. Mm. And, uh, and for me, and in a way, you know, there's a real, that was a huge blow to the identity and where I'd been up until that point trying to identify with my father, um, suddenly there were gaps where I tried to identify, suddenly there was, but I'm not him. So you saw yeah. yourself partly as an expression of your father? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. There was, um, in that time of my life, there was a real sense, because I'm 18, and at the age of 18, there's a real sense of wanting to become, wanting to be. Um, whether it was going off to be um, an artist or, or a carpenter or, or what have you, there was a real, you know, sense of, you know, wanting to become. And, and I think my father played a big part in that because I, I, I looked up to him. I, I thought he was a good man, and, and, and in some way, I, I kind of wanted to to take after him. But suddenly, there, <laughs> there were just gaps. Wherever I'd tried to be like my father, there was yeah. suddenly a gap, and in that gap. There was a loss that didn't reflect who I was. So where it didn't reflect who I was, there was then a searching. Then who am I? Must also have completely changed your relationship with him. Hugely. Massively. Mm. Massively. I think after that, um, he, he quickly became the man who, who brought me up. Mm. And, uh, and really, I could see that where I tried to identify with him, I could see really that I, I was nothing like him, to be honest. And I think maybe that's why I tried to be like him so much, is because the truth was I wasn't like him. And uh, so suddenly, you know, there, there was this, I'm not like him, and, and it did. I, I, I still see my father today, but it, it's not a, a relationship like a son and father. It's not as close as it, as it once was. So how did this impact you on a practical level? On a practical level, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, phew, that that's a fantastic question, Ian, because it, it, it impacted hugely. Um, practically, I suddenly I, I didn't know who I was. There, there was these these feelings of of um, as I said, foolishness. Uh, I felt there's a real sense of betrayal as well. And suddenly, at the age of eight, age of eighteen, I, I went into the world with this feeling okay and I was coming from a family that I was I was kind of angry with 